Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party is back in Disney World for 2023, and we went to the very first one, and we've got the scoop on whether this year's event is worth it or not. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Vlog. So Magic Kingdom's holiday after hours event has returned with even more entertainment, brand new snacks, loads of free cookies, and exclusive experiences you can't find anywhere else. So should you be jumping to grab those tickets before the event completely sells out for the year, or are you better off spending your money on Disney's other holiday celebrations? I'm gonna share everything you'll find at this event, what makes it so unique, how to get the most bang for your buck, and our team's honest thoughts on this year's party. So you can decide if it's really worth it. Okay, so what is Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party? Let's start with the basics. MVMCP is a seasonal Magic Kingdom event that takes place after the park closes, so it's 7 p.m. to midnight and requires a separate ticket to attend. That means if you want to attend the party and hang out in the park earlier in the day, you will need to buy two tickets. However, you don't need to wait until 7 p.m. to enter Magic Kingdom if you have a party ticket. Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party officially begins at 7, but party guests can enter the park at 4 p.m. We highly recommend doing this so that you can truly get the most out of that ticket and use the extra time to ride some rides and get some dinner before all the party exclusive events begin. During the party, you can snack on unlimited complimentary cookies and hot chocolate, and they have some apple cider, and they've got some eggnog this year. You can see holiday stage shows and fireworks displays, catch the Once Upon a Christmas Time parade, which always just, oh, just so happy every year. You can dance with some reindeer, you can meet Santa, and you can ride rides with lower wait times. There is definitely a lot to do during the five-hour event, and we're going to run through everything in this video so you can prioritize what is important to you and decide if this event is really worth it. Because you know what? You can spend the whole party just waiting in line to see Jack and Sally. Yeah, you can. Anyway, this year, the party is being held on 25 select nights from November 9th through December 22nd. Adult ticket prices range from $159 to $199 per person and $149 to $189 per child, ages 3 to 9. Ticket prices range by date, with those dates closer to the actual holiday holiday being more expensive than those first few parties in November. Annual pass holders and Disney Vacation Club members can save 10 bucks per ticket on select nights as well. You can buy tickets now on the Disney World website or the My Disney Experience app. You may be able to buy tickets at the gate, but know that they will not be cheaper if you buy them in person, and also know that a lot of nights are already selling out. So we're tracking all the sold out dates over at DisneyFoodBlog.com. I'll drop a link in the description so you can find out if the party date you're eyeing still has tickets available. Mickey's Very Merry Christmas party isn't the only thing going on at Disney World during the holiday season, though. Epcot is hosting the Festival of the Holidays with food booths and storytellers from around the world. Hollywood Studios has a brand new after-hours party this year, Jollywood Nights. You can check out all the details about this party at DisneyFoodBlog.com right now, and stay tuned to the channel for our full review of this event soon. Outside the parks, you've got gingerbread houses, specialty snacks, and a lot more going on. If you want to make sure you don't miss a thing during your Disney World holiday trip, we've got you covered with our Guide to the Holidays at Disney World. This is in-depth info about all of Disney World's holiday events, tips on how to avoid the crowds, itineraries, snack guides, and lots more. You can find this guide and all of our other guides, like our guide on the Disney dining plan, or any of our festival guides over at dfbstore.com. Our YouTube viewers get a special discount. Just use the code YouTube at checkout. Okay, so what's new this year at MVMCP? Of course, we're gonna get into the food a little later on in this video. There's a lot of new food items, but there are two things in particular that are brand new in 2023 that you may wanna prioritize. First up, there's the new Frozen themed show at the castle. Remember how I said you'll wanna get in the park ahead of that party start time? You can actually knock this one out before the party since it will show twice on nights when Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party is happening. Frozen Holiday Surprise will show nightly at 6.15 and on nights when there is a party, it will be shown again at 8.15. You do not need to have a ticket for Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party to see the show since that 6.15 show takes place before the exclusive holiday party begins. So that one's not exclusive and definitely worth a watch. Also new to the Christmas party this year, Tron will have a party-specific virtual queue. Magic Kingdom's newest ride can draw some pretty long waits. Even with that virtual queue system in place, you could spend over an hour in line. But during the party, a lot fewer people will have access to that line, and you may end up with some pretty low waits and get to experience the ride at its peak. Nighttime rides really are superior on Tron because of the lighting during the outside portion of the ride. If you've already ridden Tron, there are a few rides that get a special party-only overlay that you may want to prioritize 
prioritize instead. More on those in just a bit. The virtual queue for Tron opens at 6 p.m. for party guests. Now, some of the best parts of Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party are the entertainment, Minnie's wonderful Christmas time fireworks. You can catch that fireworks show once per night during the party at 10 p.m. Mickey's Once a Christmas Time Parade. This will run twice during the event at 8.30 p.m. and 11 p.m. If you can, we highly recommend waiting to watch until the second parade as crowds will likely be lower and you can get a better view much more easily. The parade does take some time to make its way through the park, so if you want to see it right when it starts, find a spot in Frontierland. Now, this parade is typically not a party exclusive offering, though its daytime run is very limited. Most years this holiday parade runs during regular park hours starting a day or two before Christmas and running through New Year's Eve. As soon as it's confirmed for this year, we'll let you know over at DisneyFoodBlog.com. Keep in mind, that is the busiest week of the year for Disney World, so crowds will be pretty wild if you're hoping to catch the parade that week. Now, Mickey's most merriest celebration is a show performed at the Cinderella Castle stage featuring Disney pals and seasonal songs. Yep, this is where Clarabelle gets to show off what she can do. You can catch this one at 740, 925, 1035, and 1155. And the Frozen Holiday Surprise. This new show brings Olaf and more than 100 of his snowy siblings, along with Anna, Elsa, and Kristoff in new holiday outfits to decorate the castle for the festivities. If you remember the old Frozen Holiday show where Elsa would light up the dream lights on the castle, this is similar in vibe, but it uses projections on the castle instead of those dream lights, which is the probably the saddest thing we'll say in this video. Again, Again, you can see this one either before the party at 6.15 or during the party at 8.15. If you've got little ones that need to burn off some energy, check out Club Tinsel, where you can dance with Disney Junior characters, and there are live music performances on the stage in Tomorrowland intermittently throughout the party. Of course, make sure to spend some time enjoying the snow on Main Street. Just don't try to catch any flakes on your tongue. Through Disney magic, it will snow several times throughout the night on Main Street, even though it might still be well above freezing in Central Florida. Now, of course, this isn't some industrial-powered snow machine. It's soap or snow. It's still very pretty, just again, don't eat it. Another big draw for a lot of folks at these special events are all the rare character meet and greets. Special characters will be out during the party in some adorable holiday outfits, including Mickey and Jack Skellington and Sally on Main Street. Sally was not meeting when we stopped by. Character lineups can change, but we did get a big tip. Since these are some of the most popular characters, try to get in line right about 20 to 30 minutes before the first parade for the shortest wait time. Tweedledee and Tweedledum, Winnie the Pooh, Tigger, Eeyore, and Piglet, plus several princesses and some princesses of with their princes in Fantasyland. Santa Goofy and the Seven Dwarfs are in Storybook Circus. Aladdin, Abu, Jasmine, and Genie are in Adventureland. Tiana and Naveen are in Frontierland, and Santa's in Liberty Square. You'll also have a chance to take photos with the toy soldiers that are in the parade, and they're kind of weird, but also kind of cute. I don't know, they're new this year. There are a lot more characters available during the party, and sometimes that lineup can change, but you can see the full lineup in the My Disney Experience app or on the party map. You can get your photos taken with all of these characters and keep an eye out for other specialty photo ops and magic shots that may only be available during the party. While there's already a lot of entertainment, you may want to hit up some rides during the party since many will see lower wait times than during the day. And we are headed into Disney's busiest season, so those daytime wait times are going to get long. Most rides are open during the party. You could spend most of your party time riding rides, and for some people that makes this event totally worth it because you can ride so many in such a short time. But there are only a few that we think you might want to prioritize. If you haven't had a chance to ride during regular park hours, hop on the Jingle Cruise for a holiday pun filled version of the classic ride. If you've got time, check out Space Mountain, which also gets a holiday overlay. This one you can only experience during the party. The ride has brightly colored projections and a loud rock Christmas soundtrack, like Deck the Halls with Electric Guitar. Tomorrowland Speedway also gets a holiday overlay with Christmas lights and decor around the track, but it's not exclusive to the party, so if you've got another night in Magic Kingdom, your time might be better spent elsewhere. Monsters, Inc. Laugh Floor also gets a bit of an overlay with holiday decor and theme jokes, and the Mad Tea Party plays Christmas music while you spin. Now included with the cost of your ticket are complimentary cookies and drinks. You'll find these at a few locations around the park. This includes unlimited hot cocoa, eggnog, and cider, and a variety of different Christmas cookies. Typically, there are also allergy-friendly options. Just ask at the counter. Like, they will have gluten-free cookies at each stop, but we have been informed this year that they don't have sugar-free cocoa, so your mileage may vary. You never know if they'll add that in. Just wanted to give you a heads up. In addition to those freebies, there are also plenty of other specialty holiday snacks. We have a handy guide with all of the 
Magic Kingdom holiday snacks on there with photos and details of each one. Best of all, it's completely free, unlike the snacks. You can get your copy of this guide sent straight to your inbox by heading to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash Very Merry and dropping us your email. We'll also sign you up for our newsletter so you can stay on top of those sold out parties. Now let's start with those all day treats that are available through December 31st, all day every day at Magic Kingdom. The Reindeer Chow Sunday is chocolate soft serve, pretzels, cereal, M&Ms, chocolate candies, and hot fudge, and it's at Anti-Gravity's Galactic Goodies. Our reporter loved this one. She said it's the perfect salty and sweet combo with lots of hot fudge. The only caveat is that it's a little small for $7.79, but it's a great Sunday if you're craving one. The mini shaped cinnamon roll is a cinnamon roll topped with red icing, holiday sprinkles, and a chocolate bow at Main Street Bakery. This is going to be the same cinnamon roll you'll find at Main Street Bakery all year, just with a holiday overlay, if you will. Tasty, but since we've had this one before and you can have it every day, we're going to move on to some other snacks. Peppermint Brownie Sunday. This is peppermint ice cream, hot fudge, and candy cane sprinkles served on a brownie at Plaza Ice Cream Parlor. This is a returning snack that we enjoyed last year. The brownie is thick and fudgy, and all around this is a great Sunday. Definitely heavier than the one at Auntie Gravity's, but if you're a peppermint fan, here we go. The Cranberry Citrus Float with Orange Vanilla Soft Serve Twist. This is basically orange vanilla soft serve with Sprite Winter Spiced Cranberry and Fruity Boba Pearls at the bottom. Now, if you're a Citrus Swirl fan but want a little twist on the classic, then this one's for you. The cranberry flavor is very light, so this isn't a major departure from the float you'll find here year round. There's the Red Velvet Wreath. That's a donut topped with buttercream and holiday sprinkles at the cart by Cinderella Castle. This sugary cake donut is one of the cheapest items at the party, so if you haven't gotten your fill of free cookies, this one might be up your alley. And there's the Hot Cocoa Churro. This is a churro rolled in hot cocoa powder and topped with marshmallows and peppermint candy pieces. It's also at the cart by Cinderella Castle. This one had a strong peppermint flavor and the marshmallows were pretty tasty, but at seven bucks, this is still just an okay churro. And there are the party exclusive snacks that are available starting at 7 p.m. The lump of coal in your stocking is a cookies and cream milkshake topped with whipped cream, cookies and cream crumbles, and a chocolate donut hole at Auntie Gravity's. Nothing extremely unique about this one since cookies and cream milkshakes are pretty common around Disney World, but tasty if you're looking to get that milkshake fix. The candy cane tart, that's a chocolate tart filled with peppermint ganache and topped with festive meringue at Casey's Corner. This one is very reminiscent of a thin mint cookie in flavor. It's very rich, it even went over our report who is not a peppermint fan, which means it's not super peppermint forward. It's more chocolate forward. Get it for $5.79. The magic holiday tree is coconut, pecans, and M&M's chocolate candies on a graham cracker crust at Cool Ship for $4.25. This is a very unique snack. I've never seen anything like this, really. It's chewy and very coconut forward. This is good for the folks who want something sweet, but not too sweet. Cosmic Rays has three items during the party. The holiday pot roast melt is slow cooked beef on thick toast with cheddar and pearl provolone cheese and beef gravy for $12.79. This is super savory. It's melt in your mouth pot roast with a really tasty cheese blend on top. It's going to satisfy those comfort food cravings. The holiday turkey burger is a turkey burger topped with traditional stuffing. A lot of stuffing, by the way. It's like a hockey puck of stuffing. Provolone cheese and cranberry chutney on a brioche bun. It's $12.59. It is an absolutely massive burger. If you're looking for a hearty dinner and want to get something unique to the party, this might be it. While it's nothing super exciting and a little on the basic side, the stuffing is flavorful and it had a good texture mix with the cranberry chutney. The Christmas cookie cake is a Christmas cookie cake roll with buttercream and it's topped with holiday sprinkles for $6.49. Tastes just like a break and bake sugar cookie with some seriously delicious true buttercream icing. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. Fryer's Nook also has a few options available. The holiday ham fried pie is a flaky pastry filled with baked ham, candied sweet potatoes, and spiced pecans served with pineapple glaze. This one was oddly a little too sweet on that sweet and savory spectrum and overall kind of a miss for our two reporters who really tried to like it. Luckily, the other things here made up for it. We definitely enjoyed the Italian beef tots. These are potato tots, tater tots, whatever you want to call them, covered in slow cooked beef and cheese curds and zesty giardinera and pot roast gravy. Tots were great, savory pot roast, like beef with a little bit of a kick to it. And who doesn't love a cheese curd, right? Also at Friar's Nook is the peppermint snowman. This is a chocolate brownie topped with cookies and cream peppermint mousse. Another win for Friar's Nook. The mousse is like a whipped Oreos meets Andy's mints on top of a delicious brownie. 10 out of 10, perfect dessert. And the winter milkshake. This is a creamy coconut milkshake topped with whipped cream, toasted coconut, cinnamon, and crisp pearls. Creamy and rich with a light, delicious coconut flavor and fun, crispy pearls and coconut shavings on top for added texture. 
not for the coconut averse, but you probably knew that already. Golden Oak Outpost has the orange gingerbread shake, which is an orange cream slushy layered with gingerbread cookie crumbs and topped with whipped cream and gingerbread spice. Now, this one was a big no from us. The orange flavor is reminiscent of an orange Tic Tac and the spice just does not blend well with that flavor and leaves an odd lingering medicinal taste. So this was this was a one out of 10. Gingerbread cake layered with cream cheese frosting and dulce de leche ganache topped with a gingerbread man chocolate piece that was next on our list. This was fluffy and moist with a thick cream cheese frosting, a nice spice with a hint of dulce de leche, overall pretty tasty and a reason to stop by Golden Oak Outpost during the party. Just avoid that shake maybe. And Main Street Bakery will also have the letter to Santa. This is a flourless chocolate cake, hot cocoa mousse and marshmallows topped with chocolate pieces. This one was delicious and adorable. The mousse is smooth and fluffy and the marshmallow is just the right consistency. For $5.49, it's a solid snack. Pecos Bill offers some savory and sweet options. The chicken tamale served Christmas style with mild red chili and green chili pumpkin seed sauces, cilantro rice, pinto beans, and queso fresco. Now the tamales we've had at Pecos Bill during party events have always been tasty, though they could maybe be a little bigger portion size. Great if you want a savory snack though. Next up there at Pecos Bill's is the chocolate eggnog reindeer. This is a chocolate tart topped with eggnog mousse and chocolate antlers for $6.99. Now the tart is rich and chocolatey, would you believe it? Almost a semi-sweet chocolate, which is balanced by the light mousse on top. And you'll definitely taste the eggnog in this one. So be prepared if you are not a big eggnog fan. They also have an orange cranberry pineapple punch with a hint of smoke from the fireplace. At Sleepy Hollow, you'll find Holiday Waffle Sunday. It's a house-made red velvet waffle topped with M&M's chocolate candies, peppermint ice cream, and hot fudge for $7.79. This is easily shareable between two or three people. It's got a rich chocolatey waffle that pairs well with the peppermint ice cream. Overall, a good snack that's worth the price. The Milk and Cookies for Santa is a brown sugar cookie cake topped with chocolate chip cookie dough mousse, milk mousse, and chocolate chip cookies. This is a bit pricey for the size, definitely not so shareable. It's kind of like a grown-up version of eating cookie dough, decadent and nice, but maybe not our favorite snack of the night. Storybook Treats has a brand new sundae, the Sugar Plum Sundae. The Sugar Plum Soft Serve sits atop sugar cookie crumbs, and it's topped with whipped cream, crisp pearls, and cotton candy for $8.29. So the soft serve is toned down on the spice level after folks thought last year's version was a bit too spicy. It is a soft fruity flavor with a hint of winter spice and an added cherry sauce that isn't in the description. The sugar cookie adds a fun crumbly texture. Sadly, ours was not beautiful, but you get the idea. And Sunshine Tree Terrace will also have Santa's belt buckle. This is a pistachio mousse with a dark chocolate truffle center and a chocolate buckle. This might have been the best snack we had all night. The mousse is light and airy with a subtle pistachio flavor and the chocolate truffle was decadent without falling into the too sweet zone. We would 100% get this again. If you're looking for something a little more substantial during your party night, Be Our Guest Restaurant and Cinderella's Royal Table are open from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. during party nights. We don't necessarily recommend spending your party time at a sit-down meal, but if you can wrap up prior to party start time, you may find more availability at these restaurants on party nights. Quick service locations around the park will also remain open with their full menus available if you need to grab dinner. Note that Aloha Isle will close at 9 p.m. and Pecos Bill will close at 11 p.m., but most most other locations will be open the full length of the party. If you want to splurge on some dessert and get a prime viewing spot for the fireworks, there are two fireworks dessert packages available this year. Both include a full dessert buffet with beer and sparkling wine for those over 21. You can choose from a seated view at Tomorrowland Terrace for $119 per adult, $75 per child, or a standing view from the Plaza Garden for $99 per adult and $59 per child. You need both a reservation for the dessert party and a ticket to Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party, so this one is an expensive dessert buffet. There is plenty of party exclusive merchandise to be had, of course, which you're going to find in the Emporium on Main Street or Star Traders in Tomorrowland. Expect it to be very busy at the beginning of the night. You'll find ornaments and mugs, spirit jerseys, t-shirts, oven mitts, pins, and more, including some stuff only for annual pass holders. And do not forget your free gift. This year, party attendees get a free toy soldier ornament. So if you get your wristband inside the park, you'll get it when you pick up your wristband. If you get your wristband at the park entrance, you can pick up your toy 
soldier on Market Street. This is a little street off to the right of the main entrance by Tony's that winds back to the plaza restaurant during special events. Be sure to pick it up early though because this area will close by 8 p.m. There's also a popcorn bucket only available during the party, the Mickey Toy Soldier Bucket. You can find him at popcorn carts around the park for $28 with a limit of two per person. They may not be party exclusive, but there are a few more holiday popcorn buckets and sippers to be on the lookout for if you want to add to your collection. The gold musical rotating tin popcorn bucket is an updated version of the one we saw last year. This popcorn bucket plays music and rotates to show different scenes with classic Disney characters. This one was officially available starting November 11th all over Disney World, but we did spot it early on the first party day in Magic Kingdom for 28 bucks. There's also a super cute holiday Donald Christmas tree sipper that is new for this year. I love how his little head just sticks out of the Christmas tree. He's an extra $14.50 with the purchase of a drink. If you're looking to support your favorite YouTube channel and get in the festive spirit, we've got plenty of holiday tees and sweatshirts, mugs, and more to help you celebrate. You'll find all of our holiday merch over at dfbstore.com. So let's talk about our experience here this year. Last year was very rainy on opening night, and that meant a lot of entertainment was canceled or delayed. If that happens, always ask about a rain check to attend a future party or any potential refunds should you end up in a situation where you really don't get to experience much of the event due to weather. But luckily, this year the weather was perfect and everything ran smoothly. The weather factor really contributed to our team being able to do a lot of stuff during the party, as only the final performance of Mickey's Most Merriest Celebration was delayed. It was easy to feel like you got your money's worth when everything ran smoothly and all the rides were running the whole evening and you weren't just being poured on the whole time. It was definitely crowded though. This was the very first night, so lots of people there to be the first to experience it. Paired with the great weather made for some pretty hectic moments on Main Street. A sold out party may not necessarily be less crowded than a busy park day, but there is a whole lot of stuff going on outside of the normal park operations to pull people in different directions. The biggest crowds you face will be during the parades and the fireworks as everybody wants to see those. You'll still want to go in with a priority list, just like you would on a regular day in Magic Kingdom, because it'll be tough to do everything, especially if you're aiming to ride a bunch of rides. On the first night, lines for characters were surprisingly not incredibly long. Some would see points of very long wait times, like 120 minutes, but then many would drop significantly and we didn't have much of a wait seeing some of the more popular characters, like Jack Skellington and the Seven Dwarfs. And overall, the party exclusive snacks were good. They definitely seemed a bit higher quality and more interesting than some party options in the past, which is great news if you're planning on spending some extra money to try those. Our team overall had a great, great time. Even those who are a no Christmas decorations until after Thanksgiving type got into the holiday spirit. All right, so should you go? Well, Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party can be a great time, but it might not be great for everyone. You should go if you love Christmas and Disney. You will get both of those to the max at this event, and if your trip lands earlier in November, you don't need to worry about missing out on the holliest, jolliest time just because you're not there on the actual holiday. Maybe you want to avoid some crowds. The party won't be empty, but compared to a regular day in the park during the holiday season, you may find a little more breathing room during this event. Or maybe you want a lazy morning. You can save a regular day ticket and purchase one for the event instead. And you can relax until you can get in at 4 p.m. or get some holiday shopping done at Disney Springs. Now you should skip this party if you're on a budget. It is expensive, more so than a single day ticket to Magic Kingdom. And if you're looking to do Disney on the cheap, there are plenty of ways to enjoy the holidays for a lot less money. Also, you might not want to do this if you don't care about the entertainment. Sure, you could ride a lot of rides in that time when everyone else is watching the parade and waiting two hours to meet Jack and Sally, but you could also just purchase Genie Plus during during the regular park day and hit plenty of rides that way too. And maybe you've got other things you might rather spend your money on. Even if you're not on a budget, $150 to $200 per person can go a long way in Disney World. You could upgrade your room, you could add more regular park days, you could buy a bunch of souvenirs, you could eat at some super fancy restaurants. So find out what your group and your family is into and where they'd prefer to spend their money. If you've planned your vacation around the holidays, maybe this is when your family is all getting together to celebrate, then this could be the perfect addition to really kick the holiday spirit into high gear. But like everything at Disney World, it's not for everyone. However, there is pretty much always something for everyone at Disney, even the non-Disney folks. So that's a wrap on the first of Disney's holiday events. Stop back by the channel real soon for a full review of Hollywood Studios' brand new Jollywood Nights. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.